Here's how I turn the Sony FX3 into my favorite B-roll camera. This is a Frankenstein rig made from random pieces from different companies. It allows me more build options and the ability to use certain parts with different cameras. On some projects, I want the smallest and lightest build possible, while on others, I need a wireless follow focus, monitors, and more. My basic build is the one I use most often. It keeps the camera small while giving me a monitor and handles. It is built off the small rig FX3 cage. This specific cage isn't available anymore, but the new version has a separate cheese plate for the top so you can use the XLR top handle without removing the cage. And then what's great about this is this now gives us two mounting points. So your base plate, your tripod plate, won't swivel, it'll stay right there. Now I'll then add a Kessler Crane quick stand and quick release receiver. This is my go-to system from going from handheld to tripod, uh, and it's just a robust system I can use with any camera. And then you use the uh, quick receiver. I have a bunch of these. This one is like the OG, the original one. Uh, I have the version twos also. It's actually being used to uh, with the FX9 overhead. So let's go ahead and add this, this base plate. And this is not needed by any means, but when you are on those jobs where you're going between handheld and sticks or you're popping off or moving all over the place, just having an instant plate to go on and off the system will save you so much time. And it might not seem like it, you know, you can just slide on the tripod plate, but once you start using these, it, it makes it a lot faster. And you'll also see kind of this will be able to be built out with rods and kind of grow with the system as we need it. We got the base plate on. As you can see, it's a, a nice stable uh, kickstand here with the feet. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we're gonna add this side handle. So this is a wooden camera side handle. I've seriously had this thing for, I don't know, five years maybe. Uh, and the only thing I've lost is one screw on top. So this thing is built really well, it's lasted forever, and I can use it on all different types of systems. I mean, anything that has a cheese plate on top, you can attach this to. I'll also shout out real quick, uh, the red tool is what I'm using. This just gives you all the camera like tools, Allen key sizes and star key sizes, uh, Phillips head, a flat head, that you need when working on cameras. I literally take it on every single job. I don't know if I've flown without this since I've gotten it, um, and I don't ever show up on set without it. For a lot of times, all I'll do is just go ahead with this NATO. This has a NATO top too, this side handle. I should have mentioned that. I can go ahead and take this top handle from small rig and slide it wherever I want. It is a great thing to have an open handle for your camera assistant to grab. So someone can grab this without accessories. What I'll end up doing is if I want to add a monitor or a tear deck, I use this swivel mount first. So this just gets things out of the way. And then with, with that, I can add my monitor here. Now, another thing I'll do sometimes is at the top of this has the airy, like the pins, the 3 8 16 and then those pins so it doesn't swivel on you, which is really great. And then I can have my monitor here. Okay, so that's an option also. I can either go here or here. We're gonna leave it off for right now and we're gonna see how it, what we like most with the Teradek and just keep that open. For a lot of my projects, this is the rig I use as the B-cam. I just wanna be able to go on sticks or off sticks quickly, instantly, pop it off, and then I can handheld and get a little more uh, control over, over my operating. And if I need a better monitor, I'll quickly throw the small HD on. I think the key is to customize the camera build for the project for what you're shooting. I find that's always the best way. Now let's say we're shooting longer, all handheld, you know, we, we want more control, we wanna make it a little bit easier. Now this is comfortable, but what would be better is an actual handle out here. So to add that side handle, I'm gonna use an airy rosette mount, a bolt-on airy rosette. This is from Small Rig. I just wanna make sure it would fit with the cage I got, but I'm pretty sure this is the standard like spacing of the screws that I'm screwing in. I can go ahead and throw in my wood side handle here from Wooden Camera. This is a great handle here. It gives me a lot of control. I can just twist this, find where I want to angle it. And I love how much it locks in. It takes a lot for this to get loose um, and fall out of place. So that feels really good. That's how I shoot so much of my work. Um, and the only addition would be is I would add a small HD monitor here. 
When I want to add accessories and power them from a V-mount, I build this rig with rods. So with the Kessler base plate, they have these screws on both the front and back. We're going to add this to the back here because we want to add our V-mount plate to the back and it's going to end up working as a counterweight. And the key for me, at least, when building out camera rigs is I want it as condensed as possible. Okay, so once we have that, we're just gonna add in two short rods. And one thing I need to check is, will this clear this? Ooh, it does, just does. <laughs> I could have probably moved this back just a little bit if I wanted to, but I think that'll work. Again, trying to make it as compressed as possible, it's better for the weight. Then we can bring this in here. So this is just a small rig V-mount plate. I actually prefer the non-powered ones because this can't break unless the physical build breaks. So there's a lot that have the pre-built in electronics and all these inputs, outputs, that's great. But if that were to break, you just lost everything. So what I like to do is just use it as a holder here, just this metal plate. Unfortunately, my Terra Deck only has SDI input. So I have to use a conversion to go from SDI to HDMI. There's some monitors that do that. Unfortunately, my monitor does not do that. This is dual lock, okay? This is my favorite Velcro. If the red tool is my favorite tool, dual lock, comes in number two. So you can buy this at any hardware store. And what I love is it doesn't have a soft side, hard side. It's the same on each side. So once you start using it, you don't have to worry about is my camera soft and the accessories hard? If I'm using someone else's stuff, did they do a different way? It just all works. And I love how snug this is. I mean, I've used this rigging Teradex to cameras on gimbals off of cars and they haven't fallen off. So if it works for that, it'll work for handheld. Then we'll go ahead and add this box. Again, I only have to do that because I don't have HDMI. Now we can start plugging this in. And what you'll find is sometimes when you start plugging in your equipment, you might need to rearrange things and that's okay. That's part of it. You, you wanna want this system to work for you, not against you. So we'll have that in there for the Blackmagic SDI box. We need a USB-C to USB-A or C to C. But since this battery I'm using, I have two of these batteries, they have the USBs on it. So that's what we're gonna use. Two 98 watt hour V-mount batteries will power the Teradek and five inch monitor all day. And then I'll run the power on the FX3 with their own batteries. So I only have the one D-tap on this battery. Uh, and a lot of batteries are like that. Again, you can get a plate that has all the powers or you can get what's called a D-tap splitter. And of course I have dual lock all over the place on this thing, you got to. And then just because I use this Teradex so much, you'll notice I do have dual lock on both sides of the Teradex. Most of my accessories, I, I, if I'm gonna use dual lock, I know just to put it everywhere. As a gimbal operator, one thing I've learned is that you should have three of every cable. I know that sounds crazy, but you don't want a big production to be held up because you didn't spend $20, $10, even $200 on a cable. Okay, your, your day rate's gonna be a lot more than that when you get on the bigger jobs. You don't wanna lose that job, that next opportunity, because you didn't have an extra cable. So I have this very, very short. Um, I usually get these custom made. There's different places that do them. And, and then you can put in the size you want of, of cable. All right, so let's go ahead and throw my five inch monitor because with this setup, I really can't use this screen. I mean, I kind of can, but at this point with the weight and everything, I'd rather have a better five inch screen. I mean, some people like the seven inch uh, screens. I just like, I like it small. I like it to keep compact. So even with this, to be honest, what it feels like is almost like a red camera. And again, you might, if you're building this, if you're trying to build out your camera, you're watching this, just know the, the best advice I can give you is, is be flexible with your rig. As you add accessories, you might need to change things. You know, even with this, you might find, oh, I don't want this slanted anymore. This base plate has to come back. You know, that. That's why I've really encouraged doing preps a day or two before your shoot, even if it's gear you own. 
because if you're building out for the exact project, it might be something slightly different and you don't want to spend that time on set troubleshooting. You want to spend that time on set finding new shots, lighting, and just perfecting other things on the job. That's kind of the build out here. I'm liking how this looks. I think this is a great little rig. Now, if I want to add a little bit more audio, okay? Again, we're going off of that. We don't need XLR audio. Maybe we have a sound recorder and they're recording separately. Uh, maybe there's another camera running with XLR inputs to get that sound. But even if you're just grabbing reference audio, having a little shotgun mic on top makes a huge difference. It, it, it's just a better quality. And even I've done live events where I've just got some sound bites from people and it's like, oh, okay, we probably won't use that. We end up using it. it so a lot of times it works. So I'm not saying this will substitute a, a great you know, XLR and a well-placed lav uh, microphone, but for the run and gun stuff, this type of microphone works really well. All right, so to step up from this, we could add a wireless follow focus. So this could be our first ACs pulling focus. Maybe even it's a situation where I don't wanna take my hand off the handle to adjust focus, and I can use this little finger wheel, thumb dial, whatever you call it. Now with this rig, what I love is there's a lot of options. We could do a single rod here and come out, or we can continue on our Kessler base plate and throw on a front mount. So we're gonna add the Kessler rod mount to our quick stand. Then we're gonna add just one 15 millimeter rod. Now, I'm just gonna add it on this side because this handle is closer and I just know that it will be easier for the weight. And depending on the lenses we're using, you're gonna need different rod lengths. I like this rod to be as short as possible uh, just for weight and balance. Now, I might just be a little OCD as a Movi operator, but I think it makes a big difference. If I wanted to operate the focus myself, I would need to add a focus wheel. And that's how I rig out the Sony FX3 to be my favorite B cam. If you have questions on the gear I talked about or want me to cover something specifically, don't hesitate to reach out. I have more videos like this coming soon, so be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.